Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to our Solomon Scott Selections here for Wednesday, February 16th. For again, today's play of the day, quick recap of what the S group having a loss in college basketball with Ball State. First half, minus four and a half at minus 114 on FanDuel. Ball State's defense was pretty good, only gave up 27 points, and yet Ball State just could not get anything going offensively against Northern Illinois. They shot 36% from the floor. Uh, I believe they had one three pointer in the entire first half, and it's going to be pretty tough for you to actually cover a number of laying points when you make one three-pointer in the entire first half. But Ball State, just really no shot offensively. And for whatever reason, college basketball, after such a great year last year, uh, just has been pretty underwhelming this year. Uh, it is what it is. I'm not really sure why. But look for a bounce-back winner here on Wednesday. And for the play today, we're going to look at an NBA matchup between the Jazz and the Lakers taking place at around 10 p.m. Eastern time. And for the play today, we're going to take the Jazz minus 5.5 and minus 110 on DraftKings. Time of recording of 9.40 a.m. Eastern time. Couple reasons why I like the Jazz in this spot. First of all, Utah is quietly getting back into form. The Jazz have won each of their last six games, with each of the last five wins coming by at least nine points. Now to go through the teams they've faced, some of them have not been good, but there is one very impressive win in that stretch. Uh, they beat Houston by 34, beat Orlando by 15, beat the Warriors by 26. That was impressive. Uh, beat the Knicks by nine, and uh, they beat the Nets by 23 beat the Nuggets by four. So a couple of good teams sprinkled in there, mostly bad. Truth is, I'm not sure where to categorize the Lakers because they're below 500. They're a playing team right now. They're not exactly good. So I do think Utah should fare pretty well against a team that is definitely inferior to them. Plus, Utah is finally fully healthy for the first time in a while because Rudy Gobert came back for the team's last game against Houston. He didn't exactly play much because he got ejected with two technical fouls in about 22 minutes. But in limited action, 22 minutes, he, was, he had 14 points, seven, uh, seven rebounds, shot seven of eight from the floor. So it did seem like Gobert was fully back. It didn't seem like there was any reason to think that he was rusty by any means. And, of course, he's going to be vital in this matchup against Anthony Davis. But the Lakers, on the other hand, have been awful for, you can argue, the entire season. But especially lately, the Lakers have lost each of their last three games. Plus, they have lost seven of their last nine games. And to go through some of the teams that they've faced against any team with a pulse, they've lost. Uh, to go through the actual games here, played the Warriors, lost, played Portland, embarrassing loss there. Played Milwaukee, lost by 15 at home. Played the Knicks, they won by seven. We know the Knicks are awful, but the Lakers trailed by 20-plus points and then had to come back and win the game in overtime. So even that win, you can argue, was not exactly impressive. A loss to the Clippers. Uh, beat Portland barely at home by five, uh, lost to Atlanta by eight, lost to Charlotte by three, lost to Philly by 18. So as I said before, the two wins in the last couple of weeks were against the Knicks and the Trailblazers, and they also split against the Trailblazers. But every other team that's been decent, they've lost. And now you face off against Utah, uh, which has been a solid team this season, 36-21. and 21. Of course, the record would be a lot better if Mitchell and Gobert were both not injured within the last month and change. But now they're both healthy again. And I do think they should fare well in the spot. Plus, the main reason why the line has shifted, this line has gone from around minus two or minus two and a half to minus five and a half. And the main reason, LeBron's knee. And he's questionable for this matchup. It's a pretty interesting scheduling spot because the Lakers have not played since their matchup against Golden State. And yet, with about three days off, LeBron is still questionable. And according to some quotes leading up to the game today, the knee doesn't sound too good. And the exact quote from LeBron, uh, he said, quote, it's the same as uh, when I had the high ankle sprain last year. The only way it'll get back to full strength uh, is rest. And I don't have the luxury of having rest, end quote. So there's two ways to read through it. One is that you'll think LeBron's going to play because he's basically just said, I can't afford to rest. Or B, he's complaining about the knee as a passive aggressive way of getting a day off in the last game before the All-Star break. I'm going to go with the latter. I don't think he's going to play in this game. And the fact that the line has already moved three and a half points on a maybe tells me that somebody might know something, that LeBron might not play. And I do think that even if he does play, I question how good the Lakers are going to be anyway because LeBron has been playing a lot this season, even with the knee issues. He's played 34-plus minutes in pretty much every game for the last couple of weeks. And the record still isn't very good. And if LeBron, of course, doesn't play, this team might get blown out by 30. So I do think it's worth gambling on. The thing is, if LeBron plays, 
Do I think it's impossible for Utah to cover this number? No, because Utah's the better team. So I do think that even if LeBron suits up, uh, Utah still has a good chance. But if LeBron does not suit up, Utah should definitely cover this number, and I do think it's worth gambling on. But if you want to look at the efficiency numbers, Utah's better in every area, to the surprise of nobody. Utah ranks number one in offensive efficiency. The Lakers rank tied for 22nd. Utah ranks ninth in defense efficiency. The Lakers rank 14th. And Utah ranks second in the rebounding rate. Los Angeles ranks 25th. So at the end of the day, Utah's just much better. Uh, they've been playing great ball. Their best ball in probably, I don't know, a month and change. And the Lakers have lost three in a row. They've lost seven of nine. And LeBron is battling a knee issue, which might cause him to rest the game before the All-Star break. Especially when you say the only way it's going to get better is rest. I feel like that's a little bit of a hint hint to the front office that you might want to actually, you know, have the day off. But we'll see what happens there. I do think Utah should end up winning this game either way by at least seven points. But if LeBron doesn't play, they really could win this game by 20. And I'm going to take a shot there, especially with Gobert back in the lineup. So play that once again here for Wednesday, February 16th, is going to be on the Jazz, minus five and a half at minus 110 on DraftKings. Bye, everyone.